So today I've come up to the Alpine region in Victoria's high country. It's a place that is close to home for me and if you follow along my work you'll know that it's where I shoot most of my landscape images. So today what I want to do is I want to take you to a spot that I've photographed before up here and talk about the importance of understanding a location or region's conditions and how to use that particular knowledge and understanding to take your photography to another level. So when I first moved up here, I found it really difficult for some time to try and photograph anything that I felt resembled what I was seeing. It was a challenge in terms of the environment and the landscape. So the Alpine region and the high country is very dense bushland. So similar to like a woodland, um, there's a lot of chaos. So it took me some time to really figure out how to create a scene that I was showing a particular subject and it was easy for the viewer to identify what that was without all the chaos around it. And that point in time came where I really started to understand the seasons and the conditions that came with it. So I shoot now predominantly during the autumn and winter seasons because that provides the best conditions to shoot this particular landscape. And that's what I want to talk about today is I want to go through and show you the difference between shooting how a particular scene, which I brought you to today, how it would look like ordinarily. Um, we've just moved into autumn now. Um, you know, today it's, you know, there's a bit of, um, uh, cloud around. Um, the, the conditions aren't ideal for shooting here. There's no fog or anything like that. But um, yeah, I just wanted to show how much um, optimal conditions can really change your scene. All right, so what I've got here is, it's a, it's a scene, it's actually one of really the first shots I took um, that I remember um, in the snow. And it's of one of the cattlemen's huts, which are quite iconic to the region. They're dotted all throughout the New South Wales and Victorian high country. Uh, there's quite a bit of history involved with them. But these days they provide a bit of shelter for hikers and people camping out here. Um, but yeah, in this scene, what I've got is the cattleman's hut just located on the you know, middle right of the frame. And then I've got this really dominant snow gun coming in from the bottom left all the way up over framing the whole scene. And it's quite a, quite a nice shot. Um, and this was a bit of a turning point for me when I came here and saw it in the snow and that's um, one of the things that really opened my eyes to what the conditions here in the Alpine can really do and how it can transform a scene in what's usually a chaotic environment. This scene isn't so chaotic but what it did do is it showed me how it can really, um, a lot of the shrubbery around here um, can be distracting. There's a lot of distracting elements. Um, that come into play when you're trying to show the viewer a particular subject um, 
so yeah the snow really um, opened my eyes to that so yeah this scene ordinarily uh, looks like this and then you know it, it, it's quite a nice scene anyway there's nothing really too distracting um, this scene I'd probably have to take multiple exposures we've got the sky kind of blown out there but yeah what it can do particularly if there's a bit of fog around it can remove a lot of that um, kind of uh, distraction in the in the background um, the snow can really help cover up like I said a lot of that shrubbery on the ground um, and also just give some nice context to the alpine region the alpine is known predominantly here in australia for um, snowy harsh conditions so it just gives a bit more feeling to the scene uh, and a bit more context to you know the time of year as well so yeah what i'll do is i'll take this shot um, and yeah just compare it to the scene that i've already got uh, which i shot a few years back um, yeah and let me know what you think which one you might prefer. Okay, so this is another scene that I've shot just of the same hut. I've just come around, around the back and yeah, I came and shot this on another completely different day, different conditions. Uh, I think it might have been in autumn, there was a lot of fog um, around and I just liked the mood that the, um, the fog gave to the scene. Um, it, it just provided a, a lot of um, it gave like a bit of an eerie feeling to the scene but also like I was saying before what the fog does is it helps remove a lot of distractions uh, simplifies the scene uh, it re removed in this case of this shot that I took at that time it removed a lot of the background so all you focused on and what I liked the most about it was just the hut and the trees all the stuff in the background which is usually a bit of a distraction the grass and the sky was removed from from the scene so yeah so I'll take this shot um, see what you think of this one and you would be able to see I think more so in this image than the one I shot over there the difference that conditions such as fog um, can provide to a scene like this So I think I'll wrap that up today. I've managed to get a couple of shots. The uh, sun's starting to come out now. The light's getting a bit harsh. But yeah, I hope I was managed to show you a few examples of how different conditions can add to your scene and really transform it from just a typical shot that will be at any time in the day or even in the morning. Um, but without those conditions, it will just have you know certain elements particularly it's more so i guess for um 
you know, chaotic environments. This is mostly where I shoot. Um, so most of the time shooting in these types of environments. So if you're ever coming up to, you know, the Alpine region, if you're in Australia or you're out in a woodland, consider these sorts of things before you go out. Um, and I'm positive that you'll come away with uh, shots that you're more happy with. So in terms of this YouTube channel, I've just started it up. I've got a camera. I'm looking to start taking you guys along with me on some trips. And yeah, it's a bit loose at the moment. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm not used to shooting in front of camera, so I'm sure the first few um, will be pretty rubbish. But yeah, I'm still hoping that you can get some educational elements um, and enjoy some of the trips that I take you on, um, regardless of the quality of the content. So yeah, I'm just hoping to take you out. Um, the, the, the idea came about that I was looking to engage more with my viewers, my audience, um, and I just feel like social media, particularly Instagram and Facebook, as everyone's aware, has really come to a point where the, the engagement's so low um, and I'm just, you know, I'm not finding much inspiration on there. So, but yeah, I just like the, the idea of being able to show everything that happens before the image that you see. Um, all you tend to see is just the finished product but you don't see any of the stuff that really um, goes into making that scene. So yeah, I'm interested in showing um, the things that I do when I go out in the field, um, how I'm thinking, what I'm looking at when I'm composing up a scene, things that spark my interest, ideas for subject matter, that sort of stuff. Um, and it might even go down the path of showing my editing workflow, those sorts of things. I don't really know yet. Um, I'll just take as it comes and, and figure it out as I go. So um, yeah, hopefully you stick around. Hopefully you um, continue watching. And yeah, I'll see you around soon for another video. Thanks a lot, cheers. So wouldn't you know it, as I'm driving home from the last shoot, I just drove through this thick fog. Just stunning. And this is just what it's like up here, the Alpine. Conditions can just change just like that. Was not predicted for fog today at all. So yeah, so I'm pretty happy. <laughs> Um, and it worked well because I get to show you now um, just what, you know, this sort of condition can really do to a scene. Um, this is, again, another dense kind of bushland scene. But as you can see, there's, um, the fog is just completely simplifying the whole scene. So you could just choose any particular tree and the rest is just completely fogged out. So I'll show you what I've got here. Got the birds in the background. Typical Aussie sounds. So yeah, so I've just framed up, I've just kind of rushed over, tried to grab something. And I've got these nice, nice trees, a couple in the centre and one either side going out. Um, just a nice well-balanced scene. This is typically something that I look for when I'm shooting. So um, just, you know, some sort of subject I just look for when I'm out here looking at trees. I haven't been here before or shot here. So the first thing I'm looking for is, um, you know, I see the trees as lines and then I try and balance out a scene. The trees don't need to be interesting. Um, you know, it helps if they are, that's why I shoot snow gums. But these ones aren't that interesting at all really, but I like um, the balance to the scene. And as you can see, the fog really just simplifies the whole scene. Typically I'll try and shoot scenes like this. Um, you know, with a low aperture number. So I'll just dial in, get focus on one of those trees. F7, we'll just ensure that all these trees here 
are in focus and the rest is soft and again the fog and then blurring and then adding a bit of softness with the aperture that's techniques that I use to try and prov to get a soft scene um, a, a look to that so that's something that I'll do but yeah plenty of dynamic range to play with so I'll just shoot with what it looks nice I'll take a scene like that So what I'll do, I'll try and walk around and try and find something, um, something else. It looks like this fog's sticking here for a while. Um, we'll wait and see, I don't know, but yeah, I'll definitely stick around, see if I can find something, uh, another composition. Um, but yeah, just, I just love being out in these conditions, just stunning. And the, and the thing that I'll say with, with conditions like this is that it's so hard to plan these sorts of scenes because when you come here and you see it like this compositions will just jump out at you because you'll see things that you, uh, ordinarily you wouldn't see here you would be looking at or you just see a lot of the chaos so you wouldn't see a lot of what's going on um, in the landscape you'd just see all the chaos Sometimes you can, you know, sometimes I'll do that. If I've been back and forth to a location and I've seen it in certain conditions like this, I'll have a bit of an idea, but yeah. Um, it, sometimes when you just come to these locations, like here, I've never been here before. If you've just got the skills and the knowledge of how to frame up a simple composition, you know, it just makes life so much easier um, for finding some real nice compositions. Anyway, I'll walk around, see what I can find, and I'll, um, I'll tune back in if I find something and show you. Alright, managed to find something else. So let me just show you what I've got here again. Um, um, so trying to find something that looks nice um, I like these the curvature you got this little bit that just goes straight through there the fog but these trees I like the curvature on these so yeah find what you like zoom in um, and a lot of the time I'm doing a lot of cropping as well um, afterwards so I'll give myself plenty of room uh, to photograph. So if I see something like this, because I'm working conditions that move in and out quite quickly, I'm always mindful of just grabbing a shot and grabbing enough room for me if I want to crop it in a bit later. So I won't actually find the perfect frame in camera. Um, what I'll do is I'll actually just try and you know, find the right frame and then zoom out a bit so I make sure I've got enough to play with later on. But I do like what I've got going on here. Um, yeah, very nice. Um, I'll grab this shot. Alright, so I found something a bit different. I just had to go back to the car and get my mic. Rookie mistake. <laughs> Realised I was recording but there was no sound. But I'll show you what I've got here. What I've done is I've actually angled the, um, the camera upwards to the trees. And as you can see, I've got these trees coming in from either side. Um, and the fog's just giving quite an eerie um, look to the scene. Which is what I quite like. It's quite different to what I'd usually shoot. It's a bit more maybe abstract in a sense. Um, strong contrast, high contrast scene, but I think that's what actually makes it work. The real dark, um, imposing 
kind of um, trees at the front. And I just love the fade off in the back. But yeah, I've got the wide angle on. I've got the 16 to 35 on, which I rarely use. Um, but I always bring it with me. I say that to everyone. I, I rarely use it. Um, but for these sorts of scenes, it's actually worked really well. Um, just the wide angle and the angle that you position it at. I angled it right to get these trees to really curve in. Um, and that's, you know, what a wide angle can be really useful for, not just shooting big foregrounds. Um, <laughs> typical kind of landscape shot so yeah it's good to um sometimes uh, use your lenses in different ways try and get a bit more creative um yeah i struggled here a bit um i really wanted to shoot something because the fog is so thick here um but yeah i thought i'd just angle it up and yeah came across this so i quite like it so yeah i think the day's worked out quite nicely actually um I'll head further down, see what I can find. I'm not sure. I think if I head any further down though, um, back home, the fog's gonna dissipate and disappear. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely happy with what I've come out with today. Um, some really nice scenes. Um, but yeah, again, just showing you what, um, what certain conditions can do. This scene, without that fog would not have the same feel and eerie feel to it, eerie look. Um, you know, you'd just be looking at blue sky. Um, so yeah, chase those conditions. That's the name of the game really. Um, yeah. All right, I think I'm done. Cheers.